If you've been searching for luggage online lately, you've probably seen these two carry-ons on Amazon and other sites. On the left, we have the Travel Pro Maxlite 4 21-inch expandable spinner and the Delsey Helium Aero 19-inch international carry-on on the right. Just after unpacking these bags and playing with them for a bit, I can already tell they're two very well-made carry-ons. The Travel Pro is a soft-sided model meant for domestic travel, while the Delsey is a hard-sided model meant for international travel. The material they're made out of does not correlate with their intended travel courses, rather their size does. The material is simply for preference. For the Maxlite 4, 360 degree spinner wheels are connected to a cage or support structure on the bottom of the bag meant to provide greater stability. There's a handle on the top, side, and even bottom of the bag. You'll find pretty much every bag has a handle on the top and side, but having the grip on the bottom makes it so you won't have to grab onto the wheels if you've placed your bag in the overhead compartment top side first. There is an expandable handle along with plenty of storage in the front for your laptop and other items you may need to quickly access. Additionally, there's a small compartment on the top which is a great place for your boarding pass or other important items while you're trying to get through security. The Dell seat boasts some similar features in a slightly different style. First and foremost, the polycarbonate shell is flexible, yet durable, and provides greater protection than what a soft-sided model would. This bag also features 360 degree spinner wheels, although they're doubled up here, so you have two on each corner for a total of eight. This model features a TSA approved lock built in, meaning if TSA has to search your bag, they can do so easily with a special key and not have to break your lock. The biggest concern a lot of people have is whether or not their carry-on will fit in the overhead compartment. Each airline has its own policy on what it will allow and what it won't. Generally speaking, as long as your bag doesn't look past the restrictions, you'll usually be alright. However, with that being said, I know there are plenty of people out there who want a definite answer. If you follow what each manufacturer advertises, your measurements are going to be off. Airlines usually include the wheels and handles, while the manufacturers don't. Therefore, I'm going to take the actual measurements now and see how they compare to what's advertised. Here's the advertised measurement of the MaxLite 4, while here's the actual measurement. Here's the advertised measurement of the Delsey, and here's the actual measurement. Now that we have the actual measurements, let's move on to see what I can fit in both of these. Below is what I would realistically pack if I was traveling for about anywhere from three to four days. Uh, this is assuming I'd be wearing my workout shoes or tennis shoes to travel in since they're probably going to be more comfortable than dress shoes. But anyways, as you can see, I have three t-shirts, two polos, a pair, two pairs of khakis, a pair of jeans, a pair of dress shoes, about five, six pairs of socks, a belt, two pairs of shorts to work out in, and two dress shirts along with my laptop and toiletry bag. So I'm going to speed this up here and hopefully I can fit everything in there and maybe have a little bit of space in the end for any other extras. Okay, wow, that actually went a lot better than I thought it was going to. A uh, couple notes in there. There's actually a little bit of space there left at the end where you could fit a couple more undershirts, underwear, maybe a few extra pairs of socks. Uh, just a couple more small items would have been able to fit pretty easily. Uh, also there at the end, you could see I was struggling to get my laptop in the front. And as you can see here, it's, it's pretty snug in there. Uh, but I also have an enormous laptop for personal use. That is actually a 17.3 inch laptop, so it's going to be difficult taking that thing anywhere. Uh, if I was traveling, I'd probably take my work laptop, which would fit in that pocket no problem. Uh, but like I said, even with the 17 inch laptop, I was still able to get it in there, and it's not too top heavy. See, it seems to roll around fine. No problems at all. Uh, there were also some other reports on the Amazon reviews that having a laptop in the front made it top heavy to where the point it would fall over. Uh, I guess that probably depends on how much you pack, but as you can see, even with my 17 inch heavy laptop, uh, it's not falling over, even just sitting there on its own or even being pushed around. 
So that demystifies that as long as you have enough stuff packed in the main compartment. So we're going to see if this will all fit in the Delcy Helium Aero carry-on. Okay, well, there you go. It seems like every... Oops. Got the belt. So it looks like everything that I had originally planned uh, just about fit. The only exception is my laptop, which did not want to fit in the front compartment. And I don't think that's because of what I actually had packed. Rather, it's the size of my laptop. I did forget the belt there at the end, but I believe there's plenty of space there still within the main compartment to fit the belt somewhere within there. So compared to the Travel Pro Max Lite 4, this seems to fit just as much. Uh, however, this is a little bit tighter on space, but it is more organized than the Travel Pro. The only downside is it'll probably be pretty tough to access your luggage in case you need to get in the middle of it in a hurry. Uh, because it sandwiches open rather than just having that top compartment flip up. So unless you want to lose all your stuff on the ground at the airport, uh, you'll need to find a place where you can rest for a few minutes and take your time opening it so it doesn't explode everywhere. Lastly, let's do some durability testing. While I wish I had some kind of scientific method of testing their durability, I do not. Uh, my budget for this video doesn't allow it, which was the cost of the luggage, uh, so I can't extensively travel with each of these carry-ons and provide real-world data. So to compromise, I'm going to perform a series of tests on the bags where they're dropped, smashed, rained on, and a few other situations they might be in. Alright, so one of the first tests I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this 25 pound plate uh, on the top of the bag about 10 times. To test the wheels here, I'm going to drop this 15 pound dumbbell uh, from about hip height, which is about two or three feet from the ground, uh, directly onto the wheels and see what happens. Now I'm going to test how well these bags hold up when they're dragged across concrete or otherwise thrown across, which is what I'm going to do. So let's get to it. Alright, so now that we've done our tests, let's assess some of the damage to each of these carry-ons. The first and most obvious thing is the Delcy emblem has come off the Helium Arrow. Uh, with the flexible polycarbonate, it can move back and forth, and so those two prongs that were holding the emblem on were able to get bent pretty easily, and thus the emblem popped right out. That was not the case for the Travel Pro. Um, I can't really tell if this is glued or sewn on, uh, but this one managed to stay on throughout the entire test, but it is a little bit scratched up uh, from the concrete scraping against it. What you'll notice next is the exterior of each of these carry-ons. Uh, the Travel Pro actually got pretty beat up on the concrete. As you can see, there are a couple holes 
here, and unfortunately, those seem to tear all the way through. So it's not only on the front part, it went all the way into the area where you would place dress shirts or other garments. So I'm not sure if it ended up catching a rock or a, just a rough part of the concrete, but that went all the way through one, two, through two, two and a half layers of fabric. That just happens to be one of the obvious downsides of soft-sided luggage. The Delcy held up pretty well in terms of the concrete test. Uh, it is pretty beat up on the outside. You can see where the plastic's been scraped up a bit. Um, but it did not fare so well with the weight being dropped on it. So where this would be replicated is if your bag ended up getting dropped and it hit a corner, it seems like it could dent pretty easily here. Or otherwise being crushed by another bag. Uh, there were a couple other spots where it also got dented up. One is right here on this corner. There's a dent in there from the weight being dropped on top. And a couple smaller ones here. They're kind of tougher to see. I don't know if the camera's going to get a hold of that. But you can see those right there as well. I did end up breaking a piece of the Travel Pro carry-on. Uh, the area where the extendable handle is housed and these aluminum slats right here. Uh, I ended up denting these so bad that the handle can't be extended anymore. Uh, to be fair, that the test was done without anything in the suitcase, so there really wasn't anything to cushion the plate uh, other than thin fabric from hitting these pieces of aluminum. So take that as you will. Uh, the test probably wasn't all that fair, but it's over now. Um, if it got dropped on the back, I imagine the result probably would have been the same. While we have this opened up, we might as well look at the bottom of the Travel Pro luggage as well. Uh, Travel Pro really pushes this stabilized bottom here, and it's either made of a really hard plastic or a metal, I can't really tell, but this piece down in here seemed to really help uh, stabilizing the body while the 15 pound dumbbell was being dropped on the wheels. Um, as you can see on the front here, this is where it took most of the impact. And with a 25 pound plate or the 15 pound dumbbell hitting it, it didn't seem to have a problem holding up to it. Now, it did end up getting a little bit scratched and beat up on the outside from the concrete test, but that's really no big deal as there's virtually no damage uh, on the inside on the bottom there. As for every other side of the Travel Pro, it actually held up and didn't get too beat up at all. Um, it seems like the plastic part around the top here. And then this little plastic piece down here was able to protect the back from getting too scraped up along the concrete. Uh, same goes for the side of it here. This, this corner edge around the wheels uh, helped to protect this side of the luggage. And the same goes for the other side as well. These little corner edges and then this top plastic piece as well. Looking at the inside of the Delcy, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong at all. Uh, some water did get in from the water test, but now that that's dried up, I mean, there's virtually nothing in here, nothing wrong. It looks essentially brand new. Uh, the outside of the shell did get beat up a whole lot from the concrete and real scratched up. And it doesn't look like any of this is going to come out anytime soon. Odds are likely it'll stay this way. On the concrete test, the TSA lock took a lot of damage. Uh, just because it sticks out about as far as the handle and looking at this now it seems to be coming undone from part of the luggage it looks like there's a little screw in there barely holding it on now uh, it still works but you know with a couple more tosses it's liable just to pop right off the wheels seem to have held up great uh, to the 15 pound dumbbell that was dropped on them I only dropped them on the top two. Uh, that only seemed to make sense since, you know, if we flipped it around, it'd still be the same test. Uh, but these top two wheels held up very well for both the Delcy and the Travel Pro. Specifically on the Travel Pro, these corner guards seemed to aid in protecting the wheels a whole lot when it came to that dumbbell. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit, this plastic edge here, it's a little bit raised in front of the wheel so anything that would come to hit the wheel would hit that plastic guard first before actually hitting the caster itself. 
overall, you're not going to be unhappy purchasing either of these bags. Uh, yes, they did get scraped up a little bit. Yes, they did get torn up from being thrown across the concrete. But odds are likely that's probably not going to happen a whole lot to you unless you're deliberately throwing your bag on the concrete. Finally, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. As I try to provide honest and unbiased reviews of the products that tend to matter most. If I'm going to spend $100 or $150 on a carry-on bag, I at least want to get a couple years worth out of it before I have to buy a new one. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.